Still in the US and Donald Trump's former lawyer Michael Cohen has testified that Donald Trump promised to reimburse him for the hush money payment to the porn star Stormy Daniels. Cohen's testimony is crucial for prosecutors in the New York case. Now, Washington correspondent Annalise Nielsen has all the details this morning. So what's Donald Trump's former fixer had to tell the court, Annalise? Look, he was going through the entire scheme, how it worked. This was essentially in the lead up to the 2016 election where he was tasked with trying to get rid of any stories that could be an issue. They talked about another story that they buried of a former Playboy bunny, but this one about Stormy Daniels is what's critical to this case. Essentially, what we heard from Michael Cohen is that he made this payment to kill the story. It was part of this catch and kill scheme with the Inquirer where they would agree to buy a story from a source and then instead of publishing it, bury it instead, which uh, doesn't win you any journalism awards, that's for sure. But what we're looking at here is whether this would be potentially influential in an election campaign to the extent where this was a campaign contribution. That's what would raise this to a felony charge. But the original charge is just how this was recorded. So Donald Trump said, look, I didn't know. I told him to get rid of the story and we got rid of it and I paid my lawyer's fees. What more do you want from me? Michael Cohen said that every detail was run past Donald Trump and he signed off on this. The other issue here, though, is Michael Cohen's not going to be the best witness when it comes to people trusting exactly what he say, says, in particular those jury members. He's been in jail already. He's had issues with uh, appearing to have a vendetta against Donald Trump after being so devoted to him. And so jurors will have to decide whether they believe him or not. So this is going to be a complex problem for them to look at. Donald Trump on the way out, though, was talking about the political implications of all this. We've seen he's had a boost in the polls, but quite interestingly, he had a group of lawmakers join him in court today, including Senator J.D. Vance, who's being touted as a potential VP pick. Disney chose to show up. They view this as a scam. I think it's a terrible thing that's happening to democracy in this country, and uh, we have a lot of them that want to come. I say just stay back and pass lots of laws to stop things like this. Uh, J.D. Vance, uh, what's going on? And that courtroom is a threat to democracy, and we cannot have a country where we get to prosecute your political opponent instead of persuading the voters. And Pete, he was also referencing earlier in the day these polls from the New York Times around these critical swing states. These are the states that in the Electoral College system decide who will become the next president of the United States. And almost all of them, bar Wisconsin, which we've got off the top, go Trump's way. If we whip through these quickly, you can see he's doing well in Pennsylvania. He's doing well in Arizona, very well in Michigan, remarkably well in Georgia and Nevada as well, meaning that even if it came to this election, if we got all those numbers in Trump's favour, it would very much be his in the bag. He wouldn't even need Wisconsin by the Electoral College math there. So this is going to be very concerning for the Biden mm -hmm. administration, this polling showing that it's young voters in particular who aren't happy with him saying that the economy is doing well. Annalise Nielsen, thank you.